All right, folks, I want to share my screen. And I'm going to talk about our next project. So um, around this time, so um, you guys, this should come up up here. But I think that the, um, the sound isn't coming out of my speakers, so I'll try and turn it up on my computer. But if you want to go back and look at it, it'll be recorded on the class. Okay, sorry, I don't know what's wrong with my speakers here at school. All right, so uh, Softo, actually, I don't even know what's wrong with my projector. Let me give me a sec. All right, so it looks like it's coming up here at school. So um, what I want to say is our next project is going to be um, Salto. I really, um, you know, I wanted this to, you guys have an opportunity to work in clay, but this is kind of a substitute for that. And that it's something that those of you who are remote will be able to easily do. Those of you who are in school, We'll be mixing it tomorrow. So we're all gonna do it together tomorrow. I'll have the supplies ready to go. And then you'll have your mixture that you can take home with you and create whatever you're gonna create with. Alrighty. Um, so um, salt dough may remind you of being in, in uh, elementary school or kindergarten or preschool, but it's a mixture of flour, salt and water. So you're going to mix those together um, in those measurements. I think that should give you enough to create something. The tricky thing about salt dough is that you, um, the water, you don't want to put too much water in. You don't want to put too little water in. So the tricky thing is to get enough, enough water to make it, um, make it malleable, but then um, you also want to make it so that um, it's not very sticky. So um, let me show you some examples of images of things that have been made with salt dough. So this piece right here, this little vase has like a glass container on the inside that it's been formed around to give it that um, dimension. And then all this stuff added to it, um, including the texture of the flower and the um, petals. So that's kind of what makes that piece. I'm not too sure if they expect that glass container to come out. Um, I don't. I don't think they do. So I think that's part of of it. It's probably intended to be used, so um, the glass container will allow it to like hold water or whatever. And then this cute little pig here, simple, just formation of an animal. Then this dragon, this sleeping dragon. So you can see how you can like see texture of the dough kind of, you can't really get rid of that um, too easily because you don't want to add too much water to make it nice and smooth because then it might fall apart. Um, I definitely, I have this video I want you to see. This is um, an art teacher who also teaches uh, clay and is kind of, you know, done a little bit of research on salt dough, but he does a little research on um, on clay as well. So he kind of equates the two together. So I thought it was an, a good thing to watch. So I want you to take a minute or so to watch this. Hey class, this week we're gonna be diving into the history of salt dough and talk about some of those origins. Hey 
Uh, so most of us are doing this at home thing or we're learning at home, working at home. I'm working in a whole different studio now. So I want to have a series devoted for my ceramic class, uh, specifically for clay, but let's get into the history of the stuff to see where it came from. So now I'm going to be putting the links down in the description of where I got my information from. So two things up front, one, I'm sourcing a lot of my information offline. So, you know, we do our own research. Uh, second thing is I'm, I was not a linguist. I took a couple years of German and I can say several, uh, words in different languages, but I am not a linguist. So I am going to be butchering a number of these things just because that's, that's the nature of the beast. Now, ceramics is one of the most ancient industries going back thousands of years. Humans discovered that clay could be found in abundance and formed into objects by first mixing with water and then firing. And this key industry was born. The oldest known ceramic artifact is dated as, as early as 28,000 years ago BC. So, a super long time ago. This was like Paleolithic era. Like, dinosaurs were dead. But, like, that puts you in, like, perspective of, like, you understand, like, that was a long time ago. Now, this oldest piece found was a statuette of a woman named the Venus of Dolini. Visconti. There's like a picture. Okay. Now, from a fall, small prehistoric settlement near Barono in the Czech Republic, in this location, hundreds of clay figurines represented the Ice Age animals were also discovered near the remains of horseshoe-shaped kilns. Now, these horseshoe-shaped kilns are kind of your traditional earthenware firing kiln. This thing that this reminds me of is an anagama kiln, which is a Japanese-style kiln, uh, sometimes referred to as the coffin because it looks like a coffin. The anagami kilns are these long bodied kilns and they, they're not super tall. They come to about like waist high and it's just this like little hole and you have to crawl in on your belly to get to the back and you have somebody push it, handing you the wear and you're sagging in the kiln and as you're stacking it, you're backing back out of it. I don't like it because of the loading factor. Everything else is like the coolest thing ever, but the, the loading factor, it's, it's a coffin and I'm not claustrophobic, but you know what? That does push a lot of buttons. It wasn't pleasant. If, I'll, if you want me to do a thing on Anagama kilns or other kilns in general, throw some down in the comments and I'll try and work on that video for us. Now, the first examples of pottery appeared in Eastern Asia several thousand years later in the Zhenandong cave in China. Now, fragments of these pots date back between 18,000 and 17,000 BC years. These fragments date back as far as 18 to 17,000 years ago. It was believed that from China, the use of pottery successfully spread through Japan, Russia, the Far Eastern region, where archaeologists have found shards of ceramic artifacts dating back as much as 14,000 years ago. Now, salt dough is just as ancient as ceramics. Why? Because we, we like carbs. Now, salt dough and creating a dough-like structure to where you can manipulate it and form similar shapes to ceramics are going to be dated back as far as the, you know, making bread because salt dough is, well, it's a dough. You can, uh, you don't eat it. It's poisonous to you and to, ch and to pets. Didn't know that, but it is. Salt dough is just as ancient as ceramics itself. The salt dough, the dough mixture that was being made was going to be the same or similar to the mixture used for traditional ma bread making. Now, traditional bread making we know is a long-standing tradition in basic societies. There's still a record on the books for Egypt where bread is a form of currency, where bread is still a right of every citizen of Egypt. It's, it's a staple of the diet. It's a staple of their culture. Uh, there's a reason why it's carved onto walls in sandstone inside of those pyramids, because it's a necessary thing. Now, salt and wheat flour were the two most common foodstuffs available to Egyptians. Bread was the staple diet for most Egyptians and the Natron. Uh, natural salt found in Egypt was commonly used as a food preservative. It is used, uh, oh, it's also used in the mummification process. Mummy time. In many past cultures, dough modeling, this is where I, this is where I screwed up last time, dough modeling, let's try it again, dough modeling, in many past cultures, dough modeling was tied up with religious beliefs and ceremonies. When sculptures would often would be offered as gifts to the gods or presents to people on important occasions. Now, examples of these would be weddings, christenings, funerals, etc. In Europe, the craft was much favored, especially in Germany, where the art was used widely in home decoration, especially during festive times. 
The materials needed to start dough making are very inexpensive, the majority of which you probably have in your kitchen or cupboard. Basic salt dough recipe, two cups of plain flour, one cup of table salt, and one cup of water. I got another video where I'm actually making this, so. It's in a quarter. I know it's in a quarter. The bread that was made was made from an ancient grain of wheat. It was called emmer. At the time, there were two types of grain in the Egyptian that the Egyptians planted, which was wheat and barley. Wheat had an important status for the ancient Egyptian economy. It was not only used for bread making, it was also used as a form of payment. Wheat was both a strategic commodity of the state and kept in vaults, as well as an investment for more difficult times. Emmer earned its worth from its high fiber content, low gluten content, and organic quality. It was a food that both the rich and the poor ate, and it was a sacred plant to ancient Egyptian gods, and it was particularly uh, relevant to Osiris. I hope you guys got something new out today's lesson. So just diving back through the history of salt dough. So let's go ahead and take care of that homework for this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and all the various platforms. Okay. All right. So I know you guys didn't really hear that, but hopefully it'll be recorded on the class. So um, that will um, be there for you. Sorry that there's no speakers in my room. Okay, so now I'm gonna go up here. Let me escape. I'm having the worst technical problems today. All right. Um, all right, so here is another video. Um, it's really quick. It's a kind of annoying, but it shows how someone is creating these turtles um, out of salt dough. And the thing I want you to notice about that is she uses like structural support. Um, she uses actually aluminum foils for support. So that's a good idea when you're um, gonna do that. just a silly thing showing you um, about, so there's a ton of stuff on YouTube if you ever wanna you know, go around looking at that stuff. And there's another one I posted, I'm not gonna go through that today, just so you can see other examples of work. Um, the other one is a much more conservative, like uh, Christmassy kind of thing. But here's some examples of artwork made with salt dough. So this is much more three-dimensional than um, than these two. These two would be a little bit more like relief where it would be flat and then built up on that. So um, there is another slide of examples of salt dough. These are a lot more um, involved. These are um, forms that were probably made with like putting it over a bowl and then um, adding the dough all together. Looks like they may have painted some of it. This guy made this giant castle little thing. And then there's this owl and the owl shows you the steps where you, know, you start with this basic form. You use tools to create the textures. They're actually using scissors to create this feather texture and then they've um, baked it. So salt dough gets baked 
for five minutes at 250 degrees, so not very hot. Um, and then uh, they, you know, finished it off with paint. So today, what I want you guys to do at home is to hunt for your um, supplies. You know, um, most kitchens will have flour and salt. Hopefully, <laughs> or something like it. Um, and you guys here will mix that up tomorrow. So I'll have the supplies here for you and we'll mix up the dough and then you'll take it home with you to create something. So flour and salt are the big things. I'm hoping you all have water. So, um, and salt, you know, quarter cup of salt is a lot of salt. So make sure you're hunting around with that stuff. Do you guys have any questions? No? Okay. So what exactly are we like doing? Are we just like getting the stuff to make it today? Today, just make sure you have the supplies. Tomorrow, I will be working on um, showing you how to mix it up and, and the consistency that you need. Mm -hmm. And then some tips on creating something. So I'm not going to ask for sketches because I'm going to let you guys kind of just um, do what you want to do with this. So you can look um, at the examples I showed you and then also you can um, do a little search looking for ideas of, of what to make. I kind of suggest animals because they're a little bit easy. Um, and you can do a lot with them, like as far as positioning, you know, you don't want anything like standing up. Salt dough is not gonna support itself standing up, but um, you know, you can do a lot of different things with that. And I'll show you more examples tomorrow too, after we mix it up, give you some ideas, okay? All right, um, I'm gonna end this recording.